Earlier this week, I was surprised to learn that TOs, judges, and collective event staff are not allowed to play in skirmish level events, despite being only tier 1 events in terms of REL or rules enforcement level. The skirmish events have an exception as applied to staff. Now, rules are rules, and I actually understand the reasoning. As potentially larger events, up to 32 people, LSS is trying to avoid any potential conflicts or disputes. I agree with the base concept. However, if TOs and judges are not allowed to participate as players in a skirmish event, then the skirmish event kit itself should include, at the very least, a judge compensation prize. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and Go Again. Thanks for checking in yet again. I appreciate you guys. Now, Earlier this week, I outlined a interesting learning I had around skirmish events as applied to judges and TOs not being allowed to play as per the official tournament guidelines. Now, as you hopefully have understood from what I try to do here, looking at both sides and understanding the nuance is important to me. So the background on what we're talking about tonight, just, just real quick, is that a skirmish event is considered to be a tier one event, which means that it is a casual level event in terms of REL or the rules enforcement level. And that's a big deal as it applies to being welcoming to new players, not being too punishing for making mistakes and, and so on, right? It's, it's a good thing, right? The idea is to make a skirmish be a more welcoming event to the community at large, as opposed to being this scary, daunting, competitive event. However, skirmish events have a distinction that makes them different from your other casual level events in that anyone who is classified as event staff is not allowed to play in the event itself. And now to be clear, just for the distinction here, this doesn't impact any staff of the store or anything like that, but rather it, it directly applies as defined in the document as to anyone working the event itself. Now, as we get into this, I want to be very clear about the fact that I 110, 1 million percent understand the logic and the reasoning here for this exception on LSS's part. What they're trying to do is create a welcoming community event, but it is large enough and it actually matters that they don't want there to be the potential for conflict or conflict of interest or anything like that, right? What they're trying to do here make, makes perfect sense. Now, skirmishes are designed to support 32 people, right? That's what's included in the kit. Furthermore, only select stores within any geographical location are granted skirmishes, right? Only a couple in each city, whatever it may be. And as such, at least in theory, the average attendance should be higher than like a local armory or something like that, right? So that's, that's what you would expect to see. These same kits, however, include prizes for 32 participants, the top eight, generally your cold foils, and then winner mats, generally first or second. That's that's really how it's always kind of been. We're in season five now, and there never has been a quote-unquote judge prize in the strictest sense as we've typically seen associated with some other higher level competitive events. Now, one quick note on this, right, again, in terms of fairness, is I believe in some of the earlier seasons, like two or three, some there were always there've always been two mats in the kit, but uh, in the past, I do believe that the second playmat was actually a people's champion type playmat, which the store could have technically awarded to the TO. Now, most stores back then also did a first, second place type thing. But again, the opportunity was technically there for that to have been a judge compensation prize in that case. Now, that is no longer the case, at least with the season five kit, right? The season five kit specifically specified that the Phoenix Flame Mat and the Ash Wing went to first and second with the first place getting the choice of the one that that individual wanted. All right, so with all that said, on the one hand, you have a casual level event, but you have an effective competitive level event as applied to who can play, right? So you also, though, only have prizing that effectively 
affects or effectively supports a casual level event. So hopefully you understand why that brings us to discussion, because I think it's an interesting issue, right? On the one hand, one can certainly and reasonably argue that since not every store gets a skirmish, the events are thus in higher demand, and then the events that are running the store should get larger attendance, make more money for entry fees, and thus in theory can afford to compensate the staff or TO or judge or whatever. And that's a completely fair argument. The flip side, though, is that as we've consistently seen in Flesh and Blood, because they do, LSS does such a great job with their pricing and their kits, the various prizes are worth real dollars. And as such, you know, chasing cold foils or what, you know, I, like I was after cold foil phi this time, right? They're highly desired, not just financially, but also emotionally because they're rare, right? So the financial and or emotional desire for one to play and do well in these events is certainly real. So my argument here is at its core issue, in either direction, right, in either argument, and I think both are valid, no matter where you stand, the core issue doesn't come from the rules or the tier distinction. Rather, it comes from the disconnect between the two tiers and the support and the, the whole the whole situation, right? With, with no support that would otherwise encourage a well-performing or a top-level judge who are often very good players to work the event versus play, what what do you do, right? That's or what does a store do, right? Hopefully you understand where I'm driving at, right? In many, what they've created in the skirmish is a case where your players would rather, in most cases, your players would rather play than work the event, and then you're left with potentially a subpar judge or an inexperienced judge or just a store person running it, and then all of a sudden you have a less than stellar. Event. You, you you guys see where I'm going here, right? Now I'm not saying that's what will happen, but you see how that could happen right? Especially with it now becoming more public. I, again, I, I've been contacted by multiple TOs in the last 48 hours who also did not know that rule, right? And again, it's there for all of us to know, but a lot of us didn't know it. And um, now that that's getting out there, right, you can see the potential for, for where we're going, right? So now to make it more clear on where I'm going, the challenge of the TO and or the judge is that you're also managing a larger pop player population at this event. So at a basic level, right, just even statistically, whatever, it's going to translate into more rounds that you have to work and also will certainly translate into more judge calls and potentially more strained situations. Furthermore, you're also further as a judge or a TO, you're also hamstrung in that the REL, the rules enforcement level is actually lower now, that's good in that it's more welcoming and forgiving to new players, but it unfortunately also gives more wiggle room to those who may decide to be unscrupulous. It, it, just, gives them more, it just gives them more wiggle room, right? So as with my skirmish last weekend, I've spent a good portion of my time over the last two days dealing, which is after the tournament, dealing with the fallout of one such incident, unpaid, unrecognized. And even if there was a situation in which I had been compensated financially by the store, let's say $15 an hour or whatever it may be, right? Which is what probably a LGS can afford reasonably, right? And probably they just like trade me some product or something like that, right? Not even pay me, right? The stress and stuff that I've dealt with after this event is really not to me worth that compensation. And I would have been just better off playing, right? So moral, hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. Moral of the story here is they need to basically pick they need to pick a pony. In my opinion, Legendary Studios needs to pick a pony, right? If, if you want it to be a casual level event, which I fully support, fully embrace, I think skirmishes are great events, then that's the way it should be. Um, and But again, I get it, right? I, I get both sides. So I, I'm curious what you guys what you guys think. And where I'm going with this is because I get both sides, I think that the if they want to keep the skirmish in the same thing it is, which is casual level event, which is awesome, they also want to prevent any potential issues from the stores or TOs or judges having conflict of interest. I also think that's a good idea. And I think that all they need to do to just save a lot of problems, save a lot of heartache, potential problems, potential heartache. Not, I mean, obviously it's been going for five seasons. We haven't had a huge issue because we're just talking about it now. Completely fair. But I think that all they need to do is this game continues to grow to encourage better events, throw in a judge prize. So anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Either way, thanks for watching. Go Commando.